What's up guys, I'm Steven. And I'm Kylie, and a couple of weeks ago, we attended our very first short-term rental conference. Yeah, we really didn't know what to expect, and to be honest, our expectations were pretty low. But we figured at worst case, we would just meet some like-minded people in the short-term vacation rental space, and you know, kind of use it as a networking opportunity. And have a little kid-free getaway in Las Vegas as well. But it ended up being so much more than that. We left with this fire lit inside of us to make some big changes in our business. And we created an action plan to implement those changes. And all of that was directly tied to some really good conversations with the speakers and also with our peers. So now that we're home and we've had some time to process things, we've prepared four big takeaways to share with you. We actually had several pages each of actionable takeaways, but these are just a few of the highlights. But first, you're probably wondering what conference did we go to? There were a couple of STR or real estate conferences this fall that would have been an easy and convenient drive for us. Bigger Pockets in San Diego was one option. There was also the VRMA conference in Las Vegas. And the third contender, which is the one that we ended up choosing, was the STR Nation Conference in Vegas. Ultimately, we went with the STR Nation Conference because it was on the smaller side. We figured it would be good to get our feet wet with a smaller conference versus one with thousands of people. And it ended up being one of the biggest things that we liked about this conference is yeah. the small size. I think there were maybe 130 people there total. And it just made the whole experience really personal. Being that this was our first STR conference, we didn't really have anything to compare it to. But in talks with some of the people there, you know, they said some of the bigger conferences are just kind of a sea of people. We also splurged for the VIP tickets, which we were a little unsure about, but we're glad we did it. It got us reserved seating kind of front and center to the stage. And there was also a VIP dinner and like an after party meet and greet with the speakers and the sponsors on the first night, or the night before the conference started. Patrick and Stephanie were the hosts of the conference and they really did a fantastic job. Yeah, we'd put our stamp of approval on SDR Nation and we really look forward to seeing what kind of events they come up with in the future. We'll link the Facebook group for STR Nation and the contact details in the description below. So be sure to check that out. One of the biggest takeaways for us personally from this conference is that it's time to hire. One of our favorite parts about the conference were the breakout groups at the end of each day where you'd split up into small tables. Yeah, ours really never had more than six or eight people. And Patrick and Stephanie would provide some prompts to kind of get the discussion started. Basically, these breakout sessions were about realizing and vocalizing, you know, some of the struggles that you have with your STR business. And then seeing how your peers could maybe directly help you or share some experiences and things that they've learned to get you over this hurdle. It became evident very quickly that where Kylie and I struggle is time or lack thereof. We know and we have known for a while that we spend so much time working in our business that we don't have time to work on our business. It's like entrepreneurial mistakes 101, right? And we're at the point now where we're comfortable with the money we're making and we could just keep chugging along with the status quo, but we really have bigger goals and visions for how we expand our business. We have some exciting things planned for 2023 for ourselves and our own portfolio and for you, but none of that is going to happen if Steven keeps getting called away every day to go fix a shower fixture like he had to do this morning, or if I'm completely bogged down with admin tasks and stocking toilet paper at the properties. We had put up a job posting for a full-time handyman a few months ago, and we've been pretty disappointed with the lack of applicants. But we also weren't trying as hard as we could to get that out to as many eyes as possible. Yeah, that is until the STR Nation conference when we met John. We'll link his Instagram handle on the screen here in case any of you are looking for a real estate agent in the Big Bear area. He clued us into a website called Wise Hire. So when we got home, we spent about two weeks really analyzing what each of us need help with and how much time would correlate to that. So would it be a full-time position, a part-time position? We also talked to our CPA about hiring a full-time person and what kind of implications that would have on us from a tax perspective. And we took a close look at our earnings and our projected future earnings to really look at what we could afford in the business and then going through all the details that hiring a full-time employee in California entails. After that, we paid the $200 fee, something around there, and put up two job postings on WiseHire. 
one for a full-time handyman and the other for a part-time property management assistant. And in about a week, we had like 150 applicants for the PM position and about 50 for the handyman. We've also been looking into virtual assistants for other jobs, but we'll save that for another video. So this week, we'll be spending time interviewing between seven and 10 candidates for each position. And instead of going back and forth over email and trying to find times for each one of these people, we'll be using a tool called Calendly. Calendly is a scheduling automation tool that eliminates the need for those back and forth emails to find a time slot that works for a call or a meeting. And it was recommended to us by Ryan Bakey, who was one of the speakers at the STR Nation conference. You may have listened to Ryan's podcast before or follow him on Instagram, but Ryan is a CPA who really knows his stuff. We met him at the VIP dinner before the conference, and then we talked to him a few times during the conference, and we actually ended up having dinner with him on Sunday night to continue the conversations. Ryan really impressed us, and that leads us to our second big takeaway. It's time to look at tax strategy and not just tax filings. You know, when we bought our first short-term rental in 2017, we really weren't looking, you know, at the tax strategy at the time because our income was pretty straightforward. But now that we own multiple properties and we have a management portfolio and other sources of income, we've realized that we need to be more forward-thinking and let the tax strategy sort of guide our next moves instead of being more reactionary. Yeah, our 2021 income kind of escalated quickly, so our tax bill at the end of the year was kind of a shock. 2022 will be a better year for us. Um, one of the things is we're taking Section 179 depreciation on the Rivian truck that we just purchased this year. And we're also considering doing a cost segregation study on one of our properties. That one should come with a caveat, I feel like, because everybody's talking about cost segs right now. It's like the buzzword in the STR world, right? But make sure you're really doing your research and talking to an expert on this because depreciating that asset fully in the first year might not be the best move for you strategically if you don't plan to continue to buy more and more properties. Yeah, there are carry forwards with cost seg depreciation, but we're just a little cautious because once you go down that cost seg and the depreciation path, it's really kind of advantageous to keep buying more properties, doing the cost segs on those to continue to get that accelerated depreciation. It's a cycle that you kind of have to commit to if you keep wanting to offset income from another source, in our case, like our property management income. Cost tags probably do make sense for us, but our tax strategy and our future investment planning is something that we'll save for another video as well because we can really deep dive into that. But please don't take any of this as tax advice. You'll want to consult a licensed expert for that. We talked to Ryan, who is a licensed expert, about perhaps coming on for an interview in one of our videos. So if there's topics about tax or anything you can think of, Drop us a comment below and we'll see if we could set that up in the future. Or shoot us an email. We'll put that below as well. Our third major takeaway from the STR Nation conference is that hotels are super intriguing. Multifamily and boutique hotels are something prior to the conference we never really considered exploring. But Dia took the stage at the conference and really blew everyone's mind with the idea. Seriously, when she was done, it was like quiet for a minute and then we're all looking around like, well... I guess we're buying a hotel next. <laughs> the basic premise is to buy a distress sort of mom and pop hotel in a marketable location and then rehab it, market it like a short-term rental. You have a bunch of individual rooms that you can list on booking platforms like Airbnb, but at the end of the day, it is a permitted hotel. One of the big draws for this that stuck out huge for us in a heavily regulated area is that you are able to sort of skirt some of these STR regulations. This is because you're operating as a hotel and not as a short-term rental at a single family residence. Yeah, and comparing a hotel to a single family residence, we're also intrigued by the ability to value it as a commercial operation and commercial real estate. Now, we're not saying that everyone should just run out and start buying up hotels. I feel like this is something where if you jump into it blindly, there's a lot of opportunity to just get in over your head. And if we do decide to go down that hotel route in the future, we'll We'll definitely be reaching out to Dia for guidance, either through one of her courses or her mastermind group. Just a note that she's not paying us to plug her. We were just really impressed uh, with the work she's done. The fourth big takeaway from the STR Nation conference is that we are all just figuring it out as we go. Hi, this is Kylie. Hi, Kylie. My name is... 
I just applied for the job in Lexington, California, and I was just trying to reach out to someone to introduce myself. Oh, sure. Thanks for calling. Um, we'll talk soon. Okay, sounds good. Have okay. a wonderful day. You too. Bye. That was someone who <coughs> just wants to apply for the property management there, assistant. <laughs> there you go. Beating down our door. Uh, so I guess this is a good tip. If anyone's looking for a job and you're applying in a sea of applicants, call the person. All right. Back to the video. When we first started out, we really didn't think to look at online resources like YouTube or Facebook groups or masterminds. I don't even know if there were any YouTube channels back then for short-term rentals. So you today, you know, doing your research and on here and trying to learn as much as you can about the business, you have a major head start from where we began. But your biggest experience is going to come firsthand. So you really just have to jump right in. You're going to make mistakes. We still make mistakes. You learn from them, you move on, and you do better the next time that situation comes up. Also, kind of an interesting thing about this business, just when you thought you've seen it all, your pool equipment all <laughs> gets stolen from a property overnight. That one came up last week. <laughs> But what we learned from this conference is the importance of surrounding yourself with like-minded people, people that you can share experiences with and learn from each other. Because at every new stage of growth, there's new challenges. But chances are there's a person out there that have been through a similar experience. If they're in your network, they can let you know things that work for them or also tell you things that they tried and didn't work. So thank you for being a part of our little community here. We hope that you're learning something new, even something small with every video that you watch here no matter where you are in your real estate investing journey. Yeah, and we're starting to look at what conferences are coming up next year. If you have one in mind, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. And maybe at a conference next year. <laughs> maybe at a conference.